Good day everyone. The lesson that we are going to have today is all about physics. Physics, as we all know, is the study of matter and energy and their relationship. So for today's lesson, I will be showing you first the importance of physics to our lives and what are the terms to be considered in studying physics. This lesson is aligned with the division made module from the division of Kolookan, and the highlight of our lesson is module number two which is entitled Kinematics of Projectile Motion. Physics is widely used by human beings every day. From the time you wake up until the moment you go to bed, we've been using the application of physics. So let me give you some of its uses and importance. But before we start, this is the most essential learning competency, and that is to investigate the relationship between the angle of radius and the height of range in projectile. Expectations are the following. Number one is to demonstrate what happens to the height and range of the projectile at different angle of release. Number two, infer from examples that the angle of release affects the height and range of projectile. Three, infer that the complementary angles result in the same range but different height for a projectile. And number four, Use examples derived from sports to show that the angle of release affects the height and range of a projectile. Different gadgets and devices are very helpful and useful in our daily living because they give convenience, easy access, comfort, and information. However, these devices are created applying the concepts of physics. Appliances at home are made to make our work easier. And these things are also made upon the application of science concepts, most especially physics. Cars, motorcycles, trucks, buses are just some of the many means of transportation that people use to go to places they want to go in a faster way. Ship can help you navigate to places overseas, and plane can make you travel from one country to another. The creation of these vehicles are made possible through the application of physics concepts. Communication is very important by people to stay connected with family and friends. Through the help of application of physics, sending messages and communication with other people make it easy for us even across the sea. Another application of physics which are useful to us are those appliances that produce heat like stove, oven, iron, blower, and many more. Speakers, radio can add some fun and entertainment to our lives. Truly, physics plays a vital role in our lives. It makes our work easier, convenient, comfortable, and informative. It also helps us to have a deep understanding of the law and rules that govern our natural world. It provides us knowledge and information to navigate our day-to-day -day activities through its basic concepts. Studying physics is very interesting and exciting because as you go along the lessons, you will notice that you are already using the technology by using the concept of physics. You will see yourself longing for more information in physics, which will give you more excitement to understand the world because physics is the basis for most technology in modern world that we are living. So after knowing the significance and application of physics to our lives, let us now be familiar with the things to encounter while studying physics. First in line, we have distance. Distance is the total path length traveled by an object. Distance refers to how far you travel from the initial position up to your destination. It is the measurement between two points. For example, from your house, it takes 3 kilometers to go to the nearest supermarket. So, 3 kilometers is the distance from your house to the supermarket. Other examples are 6 feet and 2 meters. Distance can be measured in different units such as millimeter, centimeter, inches, feet, meters, kilometers, and miles. Relative to distance is the displacement. The length of the straight line drawn from your initial position to your final position indicating the overall direction of motion is what we call displacement. Basically, it is the measurement of how far you go and in what direction. Direction is very significant in identifying the displacement of the object. It could be north, south, east, west, north of east, and many more. Displacement can be measured in millimeter, centimeter, inches, feet, kilometers, miles, 
and many more. It is the same units as the distance because they both describe how far an object traveled. The only difference is the direction. Example, 3 meters to the east, 4 meters going to the north, or 5 meters north of east. Another important term to consider in studying physics is the speed. Speed is the distance moved for unit time. Speed is the rate of motion. It refers to how fast or how slow an object moves. It can be measured using a speedometer in a vehicle. For example, 5 meters per second, 30 kilometers per hour, or 20 miles per hour. These are the units that best describe the speed, meter per second, kilometer per hour, and miles per hour. And you can calculate the speed by using this formula, distance over time. Velocity is another term connected to speed. Velocity is the rate of change of the displacement. It is basically described the speed of the object and in what direction. Describe how fast or how slow an object moves and in what particular direction. So direction is one important factor in determining the velocity of the object. It can be measured in meter per second, kilometer per hour, miles per hour. Example, 5 meter per second, 30 kilometer per hour, or 20 miles per hour. Moreover, acceleration is the quantity in physics that describes the rate of change in velocity. It describes the change in speed change in direction or both. If the speed increases or decreases, speed up or slow down, it means that acceleration occurs. The unit of acceleration are the following, like meter per second square, kilometer per hour square, or miles per hour square. You can calculate the value of acceleration by dividing the change in velocity by change in time. On another way around, if the direction changes like if the object turns right or turns left, acceleration happens. Acceleration may also happen if both the direction and speed change. Positive acceleration means that the object speeds up and negative acceleration means that an object slows down. Acceleration due to gravity is another important term to be studied in physics. Gravity is a familiar force we can experience in our daily living. When someone asks you, why objects fall? You will certainly answer, because of gravity. But how do we define gravity? Based on the theory of motion by Galileo, gravity is a force exerted by the Earth which pulls objects towards it with an acceleration of 9.8 meter per second square. This explains why objects fall to the ground if you throw it or if you release the object in mid-air because there is an attractive force that pulls or attracts objects on Earth towards its center. Gravity depends on the size and location of an object. Gravity decreases as the distance increases. It means that as we move farther away from our planet, the gravity gets weaker. And to generalize the terms that should be included in our lesson today, here are the lists. We can jot down the unit and the kind of quantity. So those are the terms that most probably you will encounter while studying physics. Those terms can be scalar or vector. When we say scalar, those are the quantities that describe the magnitude of an object like the distance of 5 kilometers. Vectors, on the other hand, are the quantities that describe both the magnitude and the direction of the object. Example, velocity. Those words will help you understand further the succeeding lessons. But the main focus of our lesson for today is the kinematics of projectile. Last time, we discussed projectile as the combination of vertical and horizontal motions. We also tackled last time about the different kinds of projectile which may be present in our day-to-day -day activities such as basketball, shooting a ball, serving volleyball, throwing a ball, playing soccer, jumping, playing golf, archery, diving, playing football, baseball, and javelin. So as you notice, projectile has been prominent in some sports and games, so athletes and players are exposed with the principles of projectile that involve the effects of angular projection plus the range and height of projectile. As I was saying, projectile motion is very evident in some sports, where a ball is usually released. In this scenario, there are two motions. 
the vertical and the horizontal motions. Take note that the horizontal component is con constant, means that the projectile moves in the same velocity while the vertical component is accelerated. I have mentioned a while ago that when you say accelerated motion, there is a change in speed. Always remember that the angle of release affects the range and height of a projectile. And the range of a projectile refers to the distance or maximum horizontal displacement traveled by a projectile. Increasing the angle of release will result in the increase of the height of the projectile. At the maximum height, the vertical component of velocity is equal to zero. The time to reach the highest point is equal to half of the total time of flight. So this concepts will help you understand more the projectile motion and will help you further to calculate some problems involving projectile. And to elaborate more, let us look at this figure. Here in this diagram, you will notice that the 45 degree angle to reach the maximum range or the maximum horizontal displacement. You will also notice that the Angles 30 degrees and 60 degrees both produce the same range because angle 30 and 60 degrees are what we call complementary angles. If you're going to add 30 and 60, it will give you an answer of 90 degrees. And 90 degrees complementary angles produce the same range. Another one is this. Look at this diagram. This is the representation of how the initial velocity affects the range of a projectile. Once again, the greater the initial velocity, the greater the range. For example, 30 meter per second initial velocity has reached the range of 91.1 meters, while 40 meters initial velocity is equal to 163 meters range. And the 50 meter per second initial velocity has reached the horizontal distance of 255 meters. So you will notice here as the velocity increases 30, 40, 50 meter per second, the range also increases from 91 to 163 to 255. It only means that as the, as the initial velocity increases, the range also increases. So let us proceed to the content of your module. On page 4 to 5 of your module number 2, you can see there an activity entitled Ready, Aim, Flight. So just follow the instructions printed on the module in order for you to investigate the relationship between the angle of release, the height, and the range of a projectile. In page 5, you are going to solve some problems involving projectiles launched at different angles with horizontal. And then you are going to calculate the maximum height, range, total time of flight of the projectile. The problem there is all about setback tap row. A setback tap row is also known as the kick volleyball, which is very native to Southeast Asia. It makes use of rattan ball, which allow the players to use their feet, head, or knee to touch the ball. For you to solve that, I will give you one sample problem now. So let me read the problem. The boy throws the ball at a speed of 10 meters per second. Determine the time of flight, the range, and the height reached by the ball at the given angle. So here in this lesson, the angle of release are the following 30 degrees, 35 degrees, 45 degrees, 50 degrees, and 65 degrees. But I am going to compute only the first angle, which is 30 degrees. So we are going to find out the value for the time of flight the maximum height, and the range. So the first thing to do is to identify the given. So in this problem, velocity is one of the given, which is equals to 10 meter per second. Another one is the angle of release that we are going to use is 30 degrees. So on your scientific calculator, you have to press sign and then 30 and then equals. And the screen will give you 0.5. So that is the equivalent for sine 30 degrees. Another 
given is the gravity, which is constant at 9.8 meter per second square. After writing down the given, you can now proceed to the formula, correct formula that you can use to solve for the missing value. So the first thing to compute is the time of flight. So for us to find out what is the value of the time of flight, you can use this formula. Time is equal to 2 multiplied by the time going up. But take note in this projectile problem, there are two time indicated. The big letter T refers to the total time of flight. This is the time that we are looking for in this problem. But before solving for the time, total time of flight, we should first solve for the time to go up which is represented by small letter T. So the big letter T or capital T refers to the time it takes the ball to go up and to go down, while the small t pertains to the time it takes the ball to go up. And the formula to solve that is this, velocity multiplied by sine 30 degrees divided by the gravity. So Let's substitute the value now. First, for the time it takes to go up, velocity is 10 meters. Sine 30 is 0.5 divided by the value of gravity, which is 9.8 meter per second square. And multiplying 10 by 0.5 will give you 5 meter per second divided by the gravity, 9.8 meter per second square. 5 divided 9.8 is equals to 0.51. So we have to cancel the units which are the same here, meter and then second. So the only remaining unit now is just second. So the final answer for the, tot for the time to go up is 0.51 second. So we are going to use this value, 0.51 second, to compute for the total time of flight because 0.51 is just the time to go up. This is not the total time. So let's have the total time of flight by using this computed value. So total time of flight is equals to 2 multiplied by 0.51 and that is equals to 1.02 seconds. So this is the time to go up and to go down or simply the total duration of time where the ball is in the air. So that's the final answer. 1.02 second that is the time of flight so to elaborate more let us see this diagram so the ball in our problem has given an initial velocity of 10 meter per second and because of that velocity it will go up into the air and reach the maximum height here which is represented by dy so d stands for distance y stands for y component Y component because it is in vertical motion. And the time to go up is equals to 0.51 seconds according to what we have computed a while ago. And the total time is equals to going up plus going down. And that is the total duration of the projectile. And because of the gravity, it will fall back to the ground. And the total time of flight is 1.04 seconds. Now, this is the dx or the range. dx is the horizontal distance reached by the projectile. So given, let's compute for the maximum height, velocity 10 meter per second, time is 0.51 Sine 30 is 0.5 and the gravity is 9.8 meter per second square. So the formula to be used to compute for the maximum height is VO multiplied by sine 30 times time minus one half of the product of time and gravity. So here, let's substitute the value. For the equation, let's proceed to the substituting the value given in our problem. So 10 meter per second in our, is our velocity 
multiply by 0.5 which is the sine 30 degrees multiply by the point by the time which is 0.51 seconds so we are going to use 0.51 uh, rather than 1.02 <clears throat> again we are going to use 0.51 because we are now finding out the value of the maximum height meaning the time to go up minus one half 9.8 meter per second square multiply by the square of time which is 0.51 so we have to square it so 10 times 0.5 times 0.51 is equals to 2.55 meters so let's bring down first 9.8 and 0.51 square is equals to 0.26 and we are going to square also the unit. That's why it becomes second square. So here it becomes 2.55 because they cancel already second since they are the same. And 9.8, we are go 9.8 multiplied by 0.26. So bring down 2.55 minus 1 half. And 9.8 times 0.26 is equals to 2.55. And I cancel second square here. So the remaining unit now is meters. So 2.55 divided by 2 to get the half is equals to 1.28. And 2.55 minus 1.28 is equals to 1.27 meters. So that is the maximum height which is represented by dy because it is the distance in the vertical motion. And the last to compute is the range. So the same velocity, which is 10 meter per second. Time now is 1.02. So this moment, as, as of this moment, we have you we have to use the time, the total time of flight, which is 1.02 second, and the gravity is 9.9.8 meter per second square. Cosine 30 is equals to 0.87 on your calculator. Just press cosine and then 30. And it will give you 0.87. The formula to be used to compute for the range is d sub x is equal to v sub o cosine 30 degrees multiplied by the time. So let us substitute the value now. So velocity is 10 meter per second. Cosine 30 is 0.87. And the time that we are going to use is the total time of flight which is 1.02. Because we are now looking for the range. When we say range, that is the distance in the horizontal, on the horizontal motion, meaning the maximum, maximum distance reached by a projectile during the during the duration of its flight. So the total time will be the time to be used here. So multiplying ten by point eighty seven by one point zero two is equals to eight point eighty seven meters. Okay. So I cancel second here. That's why the remaining unit is just meters. So those are the steps to follow in solving a problem involving projectile. Just follow the formula and the procedures carefully so that you will arrive at the correct answers. I hope this lesson is clear, but if ever you have some concerns or clarifications, feel free to message me and your questions will be entertained in the morning. Let's conclude our discussion and I hope you learned a lot today. That's all. Stay safe and have a nice day.